Hey there, welcome back, Shobham this side. From this session, let us talk about testing. Now testing is really important, not just to check our current code base, so all the changes that we have done, but also to check our future changes, that means to future proof our code base. So maybe in future we add any new class, or maybe you hire some new developer, new teammates, and they add some changes. So we need to make sure because of these new changes, our current code base is not affected. Like if you remember in the previous run, in our previous lectures, we had this model name as stream platform. And then we created a class name for views as stream platform. Now this is going to break things. So we need to take care about this. And for that, we write test cases. Now there are a lot of things that test cases cover. So we take care about URLs, views, all our serializers and our responses in the form of status code. So we are going to talk about everything step by step. The first thing is, if you already have information about testing, then I guess you already have information about this Django.test, about this test case, client, everything. But if you are starting from the basic, then no issue, we are going to start things from our documentation. Now the first thing is where to write our test cases. So if you open any of your folder, app folder, you will see a test.py file. This is by default Django file, which already have this two line of code. And we can utilize this particular file itself. And all the test cases for this app, we can write inside this test.py. And all the test cases for our watchlist app, we can write inside this test.py. The next thing, which is pretty important, that we can also create a test folder itself. So currently we have this API folder, we can also create a test folder and inside that we can create multiple test file according to our requirement. But at this point of time, we don't require this, we don't require a separate text folder, but maybe if you're working on a big project that have multiple test cases, they have multiple apps, they have things divided into multiple parts, they usually create a new test folder and inside that they create multiple test file. One thing that you need to remember, I suggest you to note it down or just remember this thing that every time you create a new test file or folder, the name should start with test. Then you can utilize underscore and whatever the name you want to give. But the name of that file should start with test. Like here we have test.py. We'll be discussing about this in future also once we start writing these cases. So don't worry about this. Now I need to jump here. I'm first uh, working on this user app and I'm going to write things inside this our test.py. So what our plan is first I need to test the registration process. Then I'm going to test out the login as well as logout process. So this is my initial plan. Then we are going to jump onto this watch list and then we have lot more cases that we need to test for our views. So if you remember, we have this big view section and we need to test everything. So it is going to take time. First, let us jump onto this file inside our user app and talk about registration, login and logout. Now here inside our test.py, just remove everything. Since we are not going to utilize this test case, we are going to utilize a rest framework and then our API test case. For now, just remove everything and then jump onto your documentation, go to API guide, scroll down at the last and click on testing and you will reach this testing page. I also recommend to open this test.py inside a new tab actually. Uh, we are going to realize everything. Now the first thing here is you will see your API client, your request client, we have this core API client, then we have API test case and few other thing. So what we are going to do is we are going to utilize this API test case. We are going to utilize this and this is going to import everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is just jump here and just import this simple case. And also let me copy this one, jump here in my GitHub and search about API test case. Now here you will see they have some client class, which is API client. So if you see here, they are importing this test case and this is from Django itself, but the client class is changed, which is API client. Let me open this one. 
Now here inside your API client, you will see force authentication method, credential method, request method, get method, post, put, patch, delete, everything. What is this and why we are using? I will be talking about them in a minute. But if you jump here, you will see a API request factory. And if I click here, open this one, and here you will see some data regarding get, post, patch, request, everything. Now, what are these? So when we are going to send a request, when we are going to test thing, we need to send request in the form of post, in the form of other things. Like if we are registering a user, we need to send a post request with data of username, email, password. And maybe if we are loading our movie list, that is our watch list, then we need to send a get request. So to send all these requests, we work with client and that client help us to send all type of request. Here you will see this client.post. So this is our client and this is pretty important. If you remember, I just discussed about this here, this client class that they are importing, that they are using API client. Now the second thing is, this is our status, which you already know that we utilize this status to get our HTTP codes 201, 404 and all the others. Then we have this reverse. Now what is this? So whenever we are working with URLs in our test file, we need to talk about these URLs also. So if you jump onto your API, go to these URLs and reverse help us to call these URLs. So if you say reverse login, that means I'm going to hit this particular link. If I say reverse register, then I'm going to hit this particular register. So this help us to target all our endpoints. I hope till now everything is clear. Now then we have our accounts or user, what type of model that we are working. So this is a base structure. Now inside our class, whatever class we are going to create for our test, all the methods that we are going to create should start with test and then we can utilize any name. So they should start with this test underscore and then all our names. So maybe if we are testing registration, then it is going to be test underscore register or registration. Otherwise, no method will be called. The method, the functions that start with test will be called. Only these methods will be called. Other than that, there are two methods, which is setup as well as tear down. We will talk about them. Only these two methods will be called. But suppose I create a new method called uh, register underscore login. We are not going to work with that. It will not be called. So there are a few rules that we are going to understand. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import everything. So let me copy these three for now. Let me jump here. Yes, remove this line. So here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import user because that is our model. And since we are using the default user model, if you remember, I'm going to import that. Otherwise, if I have created inside this, if I have imported, if I overwrite in the user model, I need to import from my models. So from Django.contrib.auth.models, I'm going to import my user model. That's the first thing. Then I'm going to import the reverse. And then I have this Django REST framework. I'm going to import status then API test case and here we are also utilizing tokens. So I need to import that. So I'm going to use from rest framework, my auth token and then models. I need to import the token part. For now, let's import these five. Uh, then we will check what other files we need. So that's the current base structure. Now I'm going to write a new class called register test case. So I'm going to use class register test case and I'm going to import this API test case. That's the first thing. Now inside this, we need to define all the test cases that we want for this particular registration. So for registration, I'm going to create only one test case that is going to be just register. So I'm going to call this method. I'm going to call test underscore register. Yeah, this is going to take self. Now inside this, I need to test everything. I need to get my data, send a post request, get a response and check if the response is correct or not. 
If the response is not correct, we are going to throw an error. Otherwise, everything is going to work fine. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get some data. So let me create some data in the form of my JSON. That will be my username. I'm going to call username as test case. Remember while writing these test cases or whenever we are going to execute this test case, we are not going to utilize our database. While running this test case, Django will temporarily create a new database and it will run all the test case inside that. So it, our database will not be affected. Don't worry about this. So this is our username. Then we need to pass email, password as well as password too. Now this is our data. So once our data is ready, we need to send a post request. And for that, we are going to utilize our client. So if you jump onto your documentation, if you scroll up a bit, you will get more information about your API client. Here you will see your API client, how they are going to send a post request, to which link they are sending, they are sending some data and they are informing about the format. Or if you scroll down a bit, you will get more information about authentication and all the other things. So we are going to utilize something similar. I strongly recommend after completing this whole section regarding testing, make sure to read this documentation. So let me jump here. Now here I'm going to send a request. So I'm going to send a client request and the request will be post. Now inside this, I need to pass two things. The first thing will be my URL, my endpoint, and the second thing will be my data. So this is going to be my data. Now either we can pass the URL, the proper URL that we have in our urls.py, or we can use reverse. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do use this reverse, and inside this, I just need to pass the name. So if you jump here, Inside your URLs, we have name as login, register as well as logout. Since we are testing this one, we are going to use this register. So I'm going to send a request to this register. So this is going to send a request to this link with this data, a post request. If you remember in our postman or in our browsable API, we have done this. Now this is going to send some request and in response, we are going to get some data. So let me store this response. Now utilizing this response, we can match everything. We can see if we are going to get correct data. We can see if we are going to get a correct status code. We can do everything here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize this assert equal. So I'm going to match the status code that we are going to get. So if we are sending a registration request, that means we are creating something. So we should get a status code of 201. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match both of them. So I'm going to utilize my response dot status underscore code. And then I'm going to match this one with my status dot HTTP and this should be 201. Okay. So that's done. That's our first test. Now we can match other things also. So maybe if we have any other thing we can use another assert equals to and then pass the two values. But for now, let me just match our status code. So if we are going to get 201, okay, that means we have created a new user. Let me jump here onto my CMD or terminal. And here you just need to run python manage.py test. Now at this point of time, we are going to get some error. Uh, before talking about the error, let me run this one and also remember when I'm going to run the command, which is python manage.py test, it is going to call the all test.py file that is inside our app, which is user app as well as our watch list app. So it is going to call all the test file. So if I run this one right now, here you can see we got an error. I will be talking about this in a while, but make sure here you are utilizing the correct status code. And also if you want to call test for a specific app, maybe just for user app, then you have to utilize this particular command. 
Now let me get back here and talk about my error. The first thing is we got F that is fail and here they have fail message inside this particular method and the line number is 19 which is this assertion code. The result we are getting is 200 and we are trying to match with 201. We did some mistake. The first mistake we did is inside our code. So if you jump onto your views.py file, here after creating a user inside our registration view, we are returning 200 OK by default as a response. So here I need to define a response code as 201. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import status that is already there. And here I am going to define a status code. This is going to be status equals to status dot and then instead of this 200 I am going to define this HTTP 201. That's done. Let me save this one. Close this. And here if I run my test again. This is working fine. We ran one test and it's okay. Now one thing here you need to see they are creating a test database. That means this is not affected. Our current SQLite 3 database is not affected. So this is our first test case. One thing you need to remember about our file name as well as our method name. We created some data, sent a post request to this particular URL with our data, got some response, stored that response in this particular variable, and then try to match this status code as well as our 201 code. Now if you need to match anything else, we can use assert equals to again and then maybe we want to match username or anything else, we can do that. That's all, that's the first test case. Now in the next lecture, let us write our second test case, talk about setup as well as few other things. I hope this lecture was helpful, you got some idea about this. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one.